Hey friends, welcome to another solar battery review. On today's video, we're actually looking at the EcoWorthy upgraded 280 amp hour battery. This is a 12.8 volt battery, and it has some new built-in features compared to the old one that we also reviewed on this channel. Let's take a closer look. Now this is a lithium iron phosphate battery. It actually is more lightweight. It's not super lightweight, but it's definitely more lightweight than other models we've looked at. It's got a 15 year lifespan, high energy density, and then this is really cool. It's got the built-in battery management system or BMS you may have seen it called. This is the other feature that I absolutely love. It actually has Bluetooth functionality so you can connect it with an app and get all sorts of really great information right on your phone. You can also see that it comes with a user manual for the app, for the battery, a spec sheet here, some battery covers, and the battery terminals. There are no included cables, so you do have to purchase those based off of your specific use case scenario separately. Now, one of the other things I really love is this new design includes this anti-swelling fixture inside. And without the fixture, basically gases over time can cause the batteries to expand, like this casing will basically expand out. It's really freaky looking if you've never seen it before. But if you have this anti-swelling fixture, everything is forced inward and it prevents that gas from expanding things out. Again, it basically just gives you better performance for the battery and longer life. Now let's do a quick comparison for the new one compared to the older version, again, both made by EcoWorthy. As you can immediately see, this one is a whole lot more compact. They're even the same height, and yet they boast the same amp hours. So that immediately does a couple of things. One, it makes this much smaller so you don't take up as much space. Again, maybe not a ton of room, but it's a significant amount if you're building these out together. The other thing to really note is that weight-wise, this is gonna be a lot lighter than this guy. Now, they're both very heavy. Don't expect to be able to just throw these around nice and easy. They do have some weight to them. And that's why you have these included little sidebars here that are also on both of the batteries. Now the old battery has the same features here, but again, if you look on this newer battery, they have that Bluetooth technology and the app that you can associate with. So again, these old versions don't have that Bluetooth technology. So in the back, you'll find the official spec sheet. And really the only change that you're gonna see here is in the weight. So this one here is coming in at 61.7 pounds, while the old battery comes in at 64 pounds. So that's really not a huge difference. It's just a more compact size. Now those terminal posts to get the battery set up here, we're gonna remove these two little plastic coverings. And then in this accessory bag, again, you'll have your wire coverings for a little extra added protection. I do like that. And then our post terminals here. And basically I'm just gonna take my Phillips head screwdriver and we're going to insert these down into each of the post holes here. All right, so let me show you my testing rig so we can actually give this thing a proper demo, both with charging and with discharging. So I've got this little portable power station I made. It sits on a dolly. We've got our inverter, 2000 watt, made for 12 volt. We've got our charge controller that's set up for the 12 volt battery. And then we're gonna be using this bifacial solar panel. It's a 195 watt solar panel. It's made by EcoWorthy. Now, as you can see, I have the battery strapped onto the bottom of the dolly. It's held in place by one of these little ratchet straps. So basically, we're just gonna take the wires coming out of our charge controller and we'll input them down onto the posts here on our battery. I then we'll connect the solar panel to the charge controller using the MC4 connectors up here. I'm gonna do that while the panel is not under load or not out in the sun. I don't want any kind of a spark or an arc to happen as I'm plugging that in. Okay, as soon as I plug the cables in, we get power to our charge controller. You can see, again, that it's showing all of our correct uh, amperage. It's also showing roughly 50% on the battery. I think what we should do before we plug this in is actually download the app. We can use a RF code that's in the instructions or actually on the battery itself. And let's get a peek at what this comes charged at. Now this is what the application looks like from EcoWorthy. We're gonna add another device up here. We're gonna look for the Bluetooth battery. And looking at the naming schemes, it does look like this is correct. There again is a little label on top of your battery. And I'm looking for those last few numbers that are 
labeled on that battery looks like it matches up. Okay, and as you can see now, we have the C160 in place. Let's click on that. And as you can see, out of the factory, it's roughly 30% is what they say. You can see it's showing 27% on our app. Again, we're showing zero watts inputted, showing the battery status on standby. I believe that's a default mode if you're not, again, plugged into any kind of a solar panel. You can see our remaining battery capacity. We've got 76 amp hours remaining out of that 280 total capacity. And we're showing our current battery temperature as normal. So good stuff. Let's click on data up here at the top. Again, you get all sorts of extra stuff here, as well as notifications if that BMS does trigger. If the BMS is triggered, you will see that notification in this section. Okay, we hooked up our solar panel, and as you can see, charge controller is reading about eight amps coming in off of the panel. So let's go back into our app and let's see what the battery looks like now. Okay, as you can see, the battery level is reading those amps. It's fluctuating a little bit. We aren't getting the best sun today, but you can also see that the battery status has switched to charging and we're getting a total of about 92 watts. So that is about half of the solar panel's capacity. We could probably push that quite a bit by getting this panel arranged in the best possible position for sun. Again, you're gonna get a little bit better read on the data there. We can click on that single cell voltage as well. So you can actually monitor each individual cell. Honestly, it means I could probably get rid of things like a battery shunt for monitoring and just do it through the application. Big bonus for me. Okay, let's do a load or a discharge test just to see that everything is working correctly. Basically to do that, we're gonna connect our inverter up to the battery. And this is gonna be a 2000 watt inverter for 12 volts. It should give us a good power test Let's go ahead and pick a couple of things to plug in to our inverter up here. I can click the on button and this will turn on here and allow us to turn that DC power into AC power. All right, we have everything plugged into the inverter. And basically what we're gonna do is we're going to use a little battery charger. This doesn't take very much, basically about 60 watts. And then we're gonna use this. This is a heat gun on the highest setting. This actually can push, as you can see, up to 1600 watts. So let's see what happens when we turn this on. I'm just gonna let that go. We're pushing up to 1500 watts total now. Everything seems to be working just great, no problems. So decent little load test. We're using like 75% of this inverter. Battery seems to be going great. So one negative thing I am seeing is that our components aren't gonna automatically turn off when the battery is connected to them. So on the inverter, it's easy. There's an on and off button, but on this specific charge controller, there's no on and off button. So again, there's no real way to turn this battery off and put it into like a long-term storage mode if it's connected to your other components. This would be a parasitic draw that would eventually over enough time burn all of your battery storage down. So basically we just would have to unconnect everything for long-term storage. Now at the time of this video, this new 280 amp hour battery is about 429 bucks. For an extra $30, this one is currently $459. This one gets you the extra features that I'm talking about. You actually can turn it on and off from up here and put it into a long-term standby mode, which is really, really great. And you get 300 amp hours instead of the 280. So again, if it's a choice between this specific battery and this battery, I would actually pay the extra 30 and go with this one almost every time. I really think at this point, the only main benefit of getting this battery over this one would be if you already have some 280 amp batteries that you're connecting in parallel or in series to create a larger battery storage or a higher voltage system. It may be worth what we'll call the sunk cost investment to get this new one in order to make that system work. Otherwise, definitely go with a 300 amp hour battery in my personal opinion. I'll put links to both of these batteries in the description box below if you'd like to pick them up for yourself. So there you go, friends. That's the EcoWorthy 12.8 volt, 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Overall, thumbs up. I mean, it's a really decent budget price. I think the extra features in here are really good. 
Honestly, the biggest thing for me, even over weight and size, is that Bluetooth technology that's included in here so I can monitor the battery from the application. If you're interested in grabbing one of these for yourself, you can find it right here on Amazon. Again, we'll put a bunch of those links in the description box below if you'd like to pick it up for yourself. Friends, thanks for watching this review and demo video. Hope it's helped. If it has, hit that thumbs up button, then stay tuned because we do a bunch of these solar videos as well as a bunch of other product review videos to help make your shopping experience, especially on Amazon, just a little bit easier. See you on the next one.